We've got some magical ways to make you feel like a kid again today on The Express. On today's show. We're looking back at Burnaby 100 years ago. Cultus Lake Water Park's big summer. What was the same? What was different? It happened in 1912. I don't want my girls to go through what I went through. West Coast Family Centers and Shauna's special story. First baby bald eagles hatched in NBC. The raptors on Vancouver Island, baby birds of prey. Some tall ones, some short ones. And later, it's Lego love on Quality Assured Collision Road Trip. See that and more local expression. Welcome to The Express, only on Shaw TV. I'm Joe Hanaward. We have a great show for families today, filled with stories that are educational and entertaining. And although I may be dressed in my plum 50s polka dot, we're going to take a ride back even farther in time up first, because here at the Burnaby Village Museum, they have a new exhibit. It happened in 1912. <music> The whir of the Wurlitzer, the rush of the wind, the sparkle in your eye and your horses. Riding the C.W. Parker carousel, you can almost smell the popcorn and cotton candy. I think that, you know, the first thing that really gets people is the lights and the motion and uh, the size of the horses. But once you've been on there and you look a little bit deeper, you realize that each horse is a really a unique work of art and that you're on a 100-year-old machine. And I think, ultimately, that's the thing that makes it really special. New this summer to the Burnaby Village Museum, touchscreen computers where you can learn the history of each horse. For keepsakes, there's a postcard kiosk to create an email or Facebook memory, and the horse of the month. An artist named Jose Rivas has been commissioned to create three original works of art that have been created into posters. Each month there's a poster featuring a different horse and that's free for people who ride the carousel. With the carousel and the interurban 1223 tram both celebrating a century, the new exhibit, It Happened in 1912, is extra meaningful for the museum. 1912 was, was a busy year uh, throughout North America. So it gives us a chance to look back and see uh, what was the same, what was different, and how that, year's really, how that year really laid the foundation for our community. Back in 1912, there were cars and jitneys, which were like cabs if you could afford it. There were horse and buggies, there were bicycles, and of course, people traveled on foot. But the tram for public transit was really the way to go, just like today's SkyTrain. In Stride Studio, photographs, maps, and artifacts explore how North Burnaby went from forest to suburb in the blink of an eye. We're looking back at Burnaby 100 years ago. Uh, in 1910, Burnaby's population was about 3,500 people, and by 1912, it was 15,000. So in 1912, I had to live in a tent? Well, <laughs> not necessarily. <laughs> um, a lot of the suburban settlers who came to Burnaby in 1912 had to build their own homes on a partially cleared lot. So many of them lived in a tent while they, uh, while they built their house. And once that house was built, you could focus on matters of the heart. Our partner group, the Canadiana Costume Society, has created a display of 1912 costumes uh, and the types of things that would have been worn by a couple who were courting in 1912. So uh, a little peek into dating 100 years ago. You know, I think there's something magical about that year, 100 years. Uh, the fact that we have these two artifacts that are celebrating their anniversary gives us a chance to look back 100 years. But I think every kid thinks a 100 years is a long, long time ago. And when we look at the world in 1912, of course it's different, but to me what's really magical is how many things are the same. It really is the beginning of the world as we know it. Gate admission to the Burnaby Village Museum is free. Carousel rides are $2.30 each, and they're also offering carousel tours every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 1 o'clock during the summer months. Now, this is definitely a popular spot for families, and family is really what life is all about, isn't it? Nobody understands that better than the West Coast Family Centers. They offer counseling and therapy for kids and their parents, but their goal isn't just to bring families together, it's to make them stronger than ever. And for me, the biggest thing is that I don't want my girls to go through what I went through as a child. Shauna grew up in a dysfunctional home and eventually fell into alcohol abuse as a teen and an adult. Over the past four years, she's been sober and has recently been reunited with two of her daughters. 
a change she strongly attributes to West Coast Family Centers. It was a part of my journey and my recovery, so there's a lot of support here, and people are, they care about you, and they, you know, it's just a good place to be. Good morning, West Coast Family Centers. We started as a group of 10, um, just out on the other side of the street here, uh, providing uh, family preservation, education, and teaching programs and assessment programs. And we grew from 10 employees up to uh, around 100 over the space of uh, 28 years. West Coast Family Centers have always provided help to families with referrals from social workers. Recently, they've expanded to include anyone. Families struggle so much, and I know as a parent myself what it's like to even in the best circumstances to find parenting difficult. And so we work with clients that, and parents and families that struggle. Programs offer things like behavior and parent counseling and focus on helping couples and families communicate clearly. Children don't use words the way we do. They don't understand um, how to express themselves in words the way we do. So play therapy gives them an opportunity to interact with all sort of, sort of an array of toys and tools and there's even sandboxes and things where they can use their imagination and they can express themselves in the medium of play. This program involves a parent and a child playing together in a room with a therapist coaching from a separate room through an earpiece. Excellent labeled praise. And we can say, give a little praise to Amelia for sitting quietly at the table. So it's in the moment live coaching for parents to be able to learn how to interact with their children differently. And we see a lot of these disruptive behaviors resolved by the end of therapy. West Coast has provided over 33,000 hours of service to clients in offices around the Lower Mainland. Service that has changed the lives of thousands of people, like Shauna's family. It's very easy when you're working with families to look at them in terms of what's not going well. And I think West Coast, as an agency, we all really try and focus on what's going well and, and, and draw from that and figure out how we can make those things help them overcome the things that maybe aren't going well. I really believe that all, all our families need is an opportunity and some education and the support to be able to change their lives. It's very inspiring to watch and I believe that everybody has the potential to make those changes and to transform their lives. I've got a lot of support when I was by myself and I felt like they just were there for me when I just, no one else was there. You know, West Coast was there when I needed them and when I didn't have anyone else. Details on all sorts of family programs can be found at westcoastfamily.org. I'm Paul McClellan in Vancouver for The Express. You're doing great. You can find out more about the centers, where they are and what they offer at westcoastfamily.org. It's time now on the Express to check in with our show family up in Whistler. Nicole Fitzgerald, so today's story had you going in circles. I want to know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's a good thing, Johanna. Glacier Air celebrated its 10th anniversary with the launch of a new aerobatic plane. We barrel rolled, we flipped, and I even got to try my hands at the controls. Thanks, Nicole. Can't wait to see how she does in the pilot seat. We're also going to take you river rafting in Squamish. We'll have more from here at the Burnaby Village Museum, plus these stops for family fun. Some tall ones, some short ones. Quality assured collision road trip. Richmond's new Legoland. First baby bald eagles hatched in NBC. The Raptors. Duncan's Birds of Prey Discovery Center. The Express, only on Shaw TV. <laughs> The Express is brought to you in part by Plum, fashion supplier to host Johanna Ward.